Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and most of you know boots are a way of life here in the Lone Star State. But the days of just having to wear brown ropers, well, they are long gone. Today, you can get boots in all sorts of colors, made of all sorts of things. And that's exactly what they do down in the valley at Rio Sub Mercedes. Over in Mercedes, just a few miles from the border to Mexico, you'll find the Rio Sub Mercedes Boot Company. There's people that want to want to know where their products come from and. Uh, want to know the story, and uh, we got a pretty good one here. Since 1999, Ryan Vaughn has been working at Rio's of Mercedes. Today, he's the CEO, and his family is on the fifth generation of Rio Grand Valleyites. Together with his wife Jody, they lead the team of craftsmen and artisans that help build their brands of boots, including Anderson Bean and Olathe boots. I have a hard working team that really care. They love building stuff and, and um, really take a lot of pride in what they do. Rios of Mercedes started in Mexico back in 1853 by the Rios family as a manufacturer of cavalry boots for the Mexican military. In 1908, they moved operations to the valley and opened a boot shop in 1928. In 1975, Joe and trainer Evans, Ryan's in-laws, bought the business and kicked it into high gear. What's it mean to you to be part of a tradition that's well, 175 years old? It's daunting, especially whenever you hear about third generation business owners, is we're usually the ones that screw it all up. <laughs> so this is the leather warehouse. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Lots of colors, lots of uh, different animals. Uh, of course, majority is, you know, cowhide, um, goats, uh, but you get some fun stuff too. I mean, Texas rattlesnakes, Western diamond, diamondback rattlesnakes. That's cool. Um, you know, hard to make a whole boot out of that. Alligator from you know, Louisiana. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it is that is tough. You're right. <laughs> but uh, American alligator, um, cool. tan tan over in uh, Alabama. Um, but then you do some fun stuff like stingrays and. Wow, that's a stingray. Uh, yeah. <laughs> God, the sound of the texture is unreal. It is. It is uh, very very durable. Wow. Uh, works really well for people who put. And spurs on and ride. Actually, motorcycle guys like it too for shifting and things. But you got to take care of it. Yeah. And definitely. then this is, uh, you know, big old pythons. The python? Yeah, a little bigger than the rattlesnake. Thankfully, oh we don't have gosh. these running around Texas, huh? Yeah, that would be terrifying. Yeah. And then this is one of the biggest things we've had in a while. Is uh, it's called an arapaima. This is a fish down out of the Amazon. That's actually not even a really big one, but uh, that's not a big fish. Not a big fish the way these things come, but incredible texture. Yeah, it's... really comfortable. Actually, soft. Um, they call them a pirauku down there, but uh, one of those things you don't get new exotics on the boot market very often, and this is one that's been. Uh, really neat and different for the last, uh, I guess, probably seven, eight years. It's fun to be creative and to be unique. I never thought I had that in me as I never was artistic and I'm still not. Your designing of boots has got to be, I mean, it's, it's limitless. It is. Now the shaft of the boot is usually the most embellished part of the footwear. The only problem is most people wear their jeans over their boots, making it sort of a mystery and hiding some of these amazing designs. The fun thing is, it's kind of like lingerie. You don't only you know it's there, and uh, and then uh, so you can you can do you can do fun things underneath, and uh, it's save it for the husband wife combination, you know. So you you make those boot tops kind of pretty and sexy and, and fun. That is amazing. I've never heard boots compared to lingerie, but that has just made my day. <laughs> so one one of the things about buying a handmade boot is is that you can recraft them, and that you're going to spend a little bit more money on the front end, but. Whenever you see these guys that are really using these boots as a tool, when they burn through their soles, they send them back and we do a complete recraft job. But you can see, I mean, this guy's been wearing these things, riding and putting them through punish them. And then you get good hippo hide there, they can hold up for years um, and uh, just need a little bit of love and new soles. How many repairs do you guys get a day or a week, a year? We do about 15 or 20 pair a day. Really? Yeah, wow, which is, uh, yeah, it's also a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very noble of you guys yeah. to. It, it, we, we wish there was enough small boot guys left around still to do this because it used to not be that big of a business. But when you do repair work and there's nothing else to repair because everything's throwaway society, yeah. not a whole lot to do anymore. And so a lot of those guys have shut down and so people are sending their stuff back to us. While the boots differ more than the diverse population of Texas. It makes it look real easy, but it's a very intricate process. It's the people that make the boots that make the difference 
at Rio's of Mercedes. And he's a young one. <laughs> he's a young one. He's a young one, yeah. We got Antonio Placencia over there, he's got 50 plus. He just celebrated 50. Wow. Uh, Mingo Ruiz over there has got 42. Wow. Mario Chapa's got about the same. So we got a lot of seasoned veterans in here, but we got some young guys too. We've been doing it for a long time and doing it the right way, and I think people appreciate that. Taking a tour of a big boot manufacturing facility in the far south part of our state is a fascinating stop on the Texas bucket list. I mean, what better way to be Texan than to wear boots that are made in South Texas? Thank you.